name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We started the fast of Saint Mary. We started it yesterday, and the fast goes for two weeks. And the fast is vegetarian or vegan, with, and you're allowed to eat fish. This fast, the church has put in place to commemorate the assumption of Saint Mary up to heaven. And according to the church tradition, the story goes that while Saint Thomas, one of the disciples, he was, he was evangelizing in India. And on his way back, on his way back from India, he saw a vision. He saw an apparition. He saw the angels um, flying up and, they, and he saw that the body of Saint Mary being carried up by the angels. So when he went to Jerusalem and he asked, where is St. Mary? And they all told him that St. Mary departed and they buried her. So he said, I want to see where the body is at. So they, the disciples took St. Thomas and they went to where the tomb is. And sure enough, they did not find the body of St. Mary. They were all very disturbed. And St. Thomas told them the vision that he has or what he saw. So the, it was said that the disciples fasted for a period of two weeks, and this is when they actually re-saw what happened. The same vision that St. Thomas saw, the disciples saw how St. Mary's body was taken up to heaven. So this is a kind of honor that our Lord Christ has bestowed on his mother, that he did not want the... We call her the lab of the incarnation, the lab of the incarnation, where God, the Son, the Son, which is one of the Trinity, came and took flesh from St. Mary. We call her the mysterious lab. How did this happen? How did this happen? It's a mystery. The angels, all we know, the angel came and told her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, will sanctify you, and you will bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. And she says, how can this be? And I do not know a man. It's a mystery. And there, our Lord Jesus Christ took a full body. And this is something very important in the dogma. We believe our Lord Jesus Christ is a full man and full God. And his divinity, his godliness, did not impact his humanity, his body. And his body did not impact his divinity. And we call it in the, in the liturgy without mingling, without confusion, without alteration. The, just exactly imagine if I take a piece of coal from the shoria, okay, without, without being lit. It's a piece of coal. Now, if I light it, it's going to be a piece of coal lit on fire. Can I separate the fire from the coal? Can I say... Okay, this is where the fire ends, and this is where the coal starts, or where this is where the fire starts and the coal ends? No, they're both united. The fire and the coal are united in one piece. You cannot separate them. Now, if I take a piece, if I take a hammer, or I take a stick, a metal stick, and I start hitting the piece of coal, what's gonna happen to the piece of coal? It's gonna break. What's gonna happen to the fire? Nothing. Still going to remain fire. Right? Did the fire make the coal stop being a coal? No. It, the fire did not impact the fact that the coal is still a coal. Did the coal imp impact the fire? No, the fire is still a fire. This is why our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the God incarnate, he was hungry. How is he hungry? And he's God. Well, he is God in the flesh, meaning the body, he can still be hungry. He can still be tired. He can still get sad. But also we see his power in miracles. We see him walking in water. We see him having authority over nature. We see him raising up the dead. That's the fire. That's the divinity. So the divinity and the humanity, the godliness of God and the humanity of God were united without it being confused, without one altering the other, but they united in a mystery 
And that was all taken from St. Mary's body. So it's a beautiful fast. And I want to tell you, in Egypt, this fast has actually been fasted by many of the non-Christians. Non, many, many non-Christians hold this fast very special in their lives, and they all fast it. So please, let's all take the blessing of St. Mary, and we start fasting if you still do not. We actually also, uh, we are very fortunate and blessed this year that the churches are open for now. You know, things are changing um, by the hour. But by the grace of God, the churches are still open, and we're going to be praying liturgies every single day in the morning, and we'll pray, be praying Vespers at night starting from 6.30 or 7 p.m. until 8.30 or 9. And we'll be having guest speakers who will coming and uh, will giving us spiritual talks every single day for two weeks. St. Mary Church, because our church is named after St. Mary, we pray for two weeks, liturgies every single day in the morning from 8 o'clock until 10. Except Thursday, we pray 6 in the morning until 7.30. So um, other churches usually pray a, a single week, but because of St. Mary's Church, we're praying for two weeks to so come and take the blessing. We are actually also celebrating the end of the Coptic calendar. We're celebrating the end of the Coptic calendar. All of us, we went through this journey, and thank God we were able to go it in person in the church. We celebrated the baptism of Christ, his birth, his baptism. Um, we celebrated the, uh, the Holy Week. We celebrated Easter. We celebrated um, uh, the Ascension. We celebrated the Feast of the Holy Spirit, the Pentecost. We celebrated the, the Fast of the Apostles. And now we are coming to the conclusion of the end of the Coptic year. And this is why out of the church wisdom, she put for us this uh, story or this parable that our Lord Jesus Christ spoke to us today about. It's the parable of the corrupt vine dressers. And the story goes like this. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he was standing in front of the Jews and the elders of the Jews and the Pharisees. And he was giving them this parable. It's a message to them. He was saying that there was a man who owned a, a vineyard. You know what a vineyard is? It's a land that they grow grapes on. And they take these grapes and they turn it into wine or, or whatever. So there's a man who owned this, uh, this vineyard. And he gave this vineyard, he hired some, what he called vine dressers, some workers to work on that vineyard. So he tells them, okay, you work on it, and I will come back, and I will take whatever you have worked on, and I'll give you some wages. And at, the, at that time, they used to break the, the harvest into three. A third would go to the owner, a third would go to the vine dressers, or to the stewards, or to workers, and a third they would store away for the next years to use it as seeds for the next year's crops. So this person who owned the vineyard, he gave it to the stewards, he gave it to the workers. The workers started to work, and he said that the owner went and he traveled for a long time. Over a while, what happened to these stewards, to these workers? They thought that the vineyard is theirs. They own it. The vine dresser, the, the man who owns the, the fields, he went and he sent the worker to go get some of the crops. And they take the worker or the servant of the owner and they beat him. He sends another one. They beat him. They send another one and they beat him. What's going on? I mean, let me send, maybe they don't respect the servants. Let me go and send my son, my only son. He goes and he sends his son and what happens? They look at him and say, oh, he is the one who's going to inherit this land, let's take him out and kill him. And sure, surely enough, they take him and they kill him. And then the owner says, what shall I do? What shall I do with these people? Maybe I should give this vineyard to others. And, they all did, and then the Jews who were listening, they knew that he was talking about them. He says, certainly not. Why is he talking about them? God has chosen the Jewish people. He gave them the commandments. He gave them the law. He gave them the priests. He gave them the Ark of Covenant. 
he gave them spiritual leaders. And many of them, they disrespected and they cast it out. And when God came to look for fruits in these people who has called chosen, he came and he found nothing. And instead, he actually, they actually went and they killed the prophets. So he was talking to the Jews. I have been sending you prophets, and you go and kill them. And instead of, of you learning from them and bringing me fruits from these, you actually are killing them. So sure enough, you will all be destroyed, and this vineyard will be given to others. The, all of us are here. We're not Jewish. We're actually Gentiles. We have Gentile descent. We're descendants of Gentiles. We're not Jewish. So, and you're all here, and you're all bringing forth fruits, right? Because you have accepted Christ in your life. So let's talk a little bit about some of the spiritual meanings of this. First of all, the man owned the land, and the land, the man owned the vineyard, and then he gave it to the workers to work on. This is a very important spiritual message that we all need to realize. We, our friends, we do not own anything. Everything that, is, that we have is given to us as a gift. Everything. Your body is a gift. Your brain is a gift. Your talent is a gift. It's not yours. Your friends are a gift. Your church is a gift. The the house you live in is a gift. The family that you have is a gift. And you're given these gifts as stewards, meaning the owner, who is God, will come back and ask you, what have you done with it? What have you done with it? We are made to look over the things God has given to us. Imagine if I have a home, and I am going to travel for a little bit, and I'm going to tell you, okay, you, X, I want you to take care of my home until I finish my business and I'm going to come back to you. I might take a few years. So that you are become, you become what you call a steward, someone who watches over my property. So, for example, if you, if you have an opportunity, I tell you, if you want to rent it, rent it. I want you to bring me profit out of this house. So say, okay, Abuna, I'll do whatever you, I can do for you. You take the house, you clean it up, you take care of it, you start to rent it, you then you find another, you take care of it, something is broken, you make sure it's always in order. But if there is any major decisions, can you go and sell this house without my permission? No, you have to come. Can you make an exp like a major expansion? Can you say, you know, I don't need, shall I, I'm going to make this house smaller without my permission? Can I make this house bigger without my permission? No, any major decisions, you have to come to the owner. The same thing is with everything that we have. I do not own anything. I do not own the church. I do not own the service. I do not own my family. I do not own anything. Everything is a gift from God, and I'll be asked, what have you done with it? How you have invested it? He will come and ask us, I have given you eyes. What did you use the eyes for? I have given you the gift of vision. Was it eyes to see the best in people? Is it eyes that looks for opportunities to do good? Or was it eyes of envy? Or was it eyes of impurity? I have given you a tongue. What have you done with it? Have you used this tongue to encourage? Have you used this tongue to support someone who needs to, to hear a, a good word? Have you used this tongue to support someone who is in, in dire need of help? I have given you a, the the gift of mind. Have you used it to think of what is good and what can be used for good and to build? Or have you used it to plan things that are evil? Have you thought, how can I use this logic that God has given me? There are some of you here are extremely smart and I've seen them using their gifts in amazing ways. They go and they do research and they read and they come and they ask me questions. It's really amazing. This is what we need to use our brains for. I have given you a heart, not a muscle. No, I have given you the ability to love. What have you used it for? Did you make your heart bigger and accept more people in? Or did you make your heart small enough for two people or one person? Is your heart big enough to take in everyone? I have given you a church. I have given you a place where you can come and be cleansed and purified 
and renewed and changed, an opportunity for you to love and offer your talents. Have you used it? Or has it just been a place I just go occasionally? I have given you a place when you come inside, you will come outside of it, out of it, a saint. Yes, this church and every Orthodox church has the ability to make us saints. Yes, true. It is very true. This place, this church, if we know what we're here for, if we know what we're taking, the pure body and the precious blood, and the power that's behind it, behind him, when we eat him, it's a promise. Whoever eats me, I will abide in you and you and me. In this place, you receive the most precious gift as well. Holy Spirit, what have you done with this spirit? What have you done with the temple that I made in you? Are you using this temple? Does, does your altar in your heart, does it smell like incense or does it have spider webs? Are we using it every day? Are we offering sacrifices every day? A sacrifice of prayer, a sacrifice of repentance, a sacrifice of tears, a sacrifice of hard work, a sacrifice of service. What have I done with my altar? Is my altar closed for renovations? Or closed because we're not using it? Am I cleaning my temple every once in a while in a confession? Am I looking to see what's inside my temple? Do I have objects? Do I have money sitting on it? Do you have clutter? Do I have things? Or am I, am I continuously looking over my temple and my altar in my heart? And since that altar is always clean, there is nothing on it. Only Christ is on it. Only Christ is on it. It's an opportunity for us to, as we come to the conclusion of this year, to self-reflect. The vine dressers, us, the, the true vine with Christ, will come and he will ask us of the fruits. And we will have to give an answer. We will have to give an answer. And if we're not ready, and if we do not have sufficient fruits, we'll be, it will be very shameful. So let us today, I want you to self-reflect. Lord, what have you given me? What, what is something especially you have given me that maybe others don't have? Maybe I'm very social. You have given me the ability to connect with everyone. Lord, what am I using this for? Am I using it to attract people to you? Or am I using it just to have fun? I'm not saying the church does not want you to have fun. Have fun. Have good fun, have clean fun, have pure fun. Our Lord Jesus Christ went to a wedding. He is for fun. But most importantly, we have to know that the goal is Christ, and the goal is heaven. What have I done with the relationships that I have? I, maybe God has given me the, the gift of, of logic and reason. Have I done it to study? To study it a bit more, to understand a bit more, to go a bit deeper in the knowledge of Christ? Maybe God has given me the talent of singing. Have I used it to pray? Have I used it to sing, to bring, to attract people to Christ? Remember, we will not go to heaven ourselves. We have to, you have to go to heaven dragging people behind you. Dragging your family, dragging your spouse, dragging friends. We cannot go alone. Saints cannot go alone to church. You have to be dragging someone. Look into ourselves. Look into your lives. Look into your talents tonight. Maybe we're sitting with your family and what, what, what did the Lord give you? And how can we use it for him? May God give us the wisdom and the strength to recognize that everything we have is a gift from him and use it for his glory and glory be to our God forever and ever. Amen.